Welcome everybody. In this session, we are going to learn about Adobe Photoshop. Uh, we are going to cover about three chapters in this. That is fourth, fifth, and your sixth chapter. All the three are extensions of Photoshop, so it's better we complete it together. So let's see what are the topics which we are going to cover under this uh, chapter. That is introduction, using layers, mark your tools, lasso tools, crop and slice tools, measuring tools, retouching tools, and painting tools. So before we start with what is Adobe Photoshop and uh, what are the uses of it, we need to understand what do we mean by desktop publishing. As uh, Photoshop comes under desktop publishing, it is one of the software which uh, comes under desktop publishing. So desktop publishing is nothing but creating documents using page layout skill on your PC, that is your personal computer. So we are going to create documents with page layout skill. Page layouts are nothing but how you are going to represent at, uh, a set of text and uh, the images in, in that particular in a single page so that is page layout skill and desktop publishing software can generate it so what does it do the software generates layer these layouts and produce typographic quality text and images comparable to traditional typography and printing so typography is nothing but the art of representing text that is different fonts we can use for uh, representing a text in a page for example if we are uh, trying to create a banner so obviously in a banner we use different fonts different uh, art of representing text and as well the images and if, if we are trying to design something as a an invitation again even in an invitation you would have seen different font styles being used so that art of representing the text is nothing but typography and the images as well so normal traditional typography and printing is nothing but the normal printing which we use for uh, say any assignments or any projects are being printed that font is completely different from the uh, different art forms which we use in uh, preparing invitations and your banner. So this technology allows individuals, businesses and other organizations to self-publish a wide range of printed material. So these, this technology is used to print large amount of uh, uh, materials, uh, let that be an individual uh, person or in businesses and other organizations as well. So what are the different, uh, I have listed out few uh, softwares which comes under DTP. So that is, uh, these are the few uh, examples, Adobe Framemaker, uh, Frame Adobe Home Publisher, Adobe, Il Adobe Illustra Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, Adobe PageMaker, Adobe Photoshop, Corel Draw, Microsoft PowerPoint. So we are going to learn about Adobe Photoshop over here. So let's just start with the main concept that is Adobe Photoshop. The Photoshop is an image editing software developed and manufactured by Adobe Systems and the software allows users to manipulate, crop, resize and uh, correct colors on digital photographs. So even you would have seen when you go to a photo studio and they take your uh, passport size photographs. Now what is we don't uh, go to a photo studio because uh, we take our photographs either with our mobile or our own digital cameras. We just go for taking printouts or something. So when you go to a photo studio, when you take your passport size photograph, you would have noticed that they take your photograph and they put it in their system and they use the software to do some small editing. That software is mostly the Photoshop software which they use. So when they, what they do is they either brighten your image or uh, do, uh, they try to remove some spots which is actually there, in, uh, are there on your face which they try to remove it and they try to uh, make your image look more uh, good so when you get the printout you can see by yourself that how uh, how you appear actually and how the image has been changed so photoshop is mainly used for editing your uh, digital photographs and the software is uh, particularly popular among the professional photographers and graphic designers let me show you a uh, sample image of uh, photos which has been edited as you can see i've just used three images this is uh, a normal image this I just took uh, from randomly from uh, internet so just to show you how they do the uh, editing and all in Photoshop so this is a normal image uh, this is something which they have taken and uh, this is what they have edited using Photoshop and as you can see how drastically they have changed it they have used the same building in uh, tracks and all the person is there here there is no building but they have the building over here and there are few things which is already there in the image they have tried to keep that one uh, the actual image and as well have included few more uh, things so that now it has it looks the complete image has been changed into a 
new if they have given a new look to it this is again another simple image of a person who they have taken photograph in a dull uh, uh, daylight uh, image and which they have edited it using photoshop now it looks much more better the the background everything has been brightened and the person is also looking much better in the edited image and this is this as you can see little scary one uh, somebody trying to come out of a person's eye so this is somewhat like a graphical image so as you can see we can do so many editing works in photoshop using the uh, uh, photoshop software starting a photoshop uh, so let's see how to start a photoshop in our system i'm using windows 8.1 version so we have to go to start and then on the search section we I'll, i'll have to type adobe a uh, photoshop or just the word photoshop when you type you get the list of uh, applications which are installed with the name photo so we will get, i'll just show you practically also how it works before we start when we start a photoshop say uh, if i have been using photoshop say i have you opened photoshop before itself and i have done some changes in the settings of that uh, photoshop software and even if i close that photoshop software and when i open it once again the previous settings which i have done the settings are going to be the same that cannot be changed so if a person a new person is using the system and he wants everything to be uh, just like a default uh, settings which was there initially so for that what we need to do is uh, we have a shortcut key called shift control alt this is a shortcut key so when you start your uh, photoshop software you have to uh, press the shift control alt key continuously until you get this uh, image uh, this uh, information this box uh, prompt which you are able to see here on the right side uh, delete the photo adobe photo uh, photoshop setting file so when you click yes all the previous settings which was done in photoshop software that will get erased and everything will come back to the default setting so let's see how practically uh, we are going to work with it So I'll just go to the desktop and go to start, and here I'll click on search option, and I'm going to type photo. When I'm typing photo, you can see the list of applications with the name photo comes over here. So this is the first one which I've already installed, Adobe Photoshop CS6. So I'm using the version for Adobe Photoshop CS6, 64 bits. So I'll just click on it, and the Photoshop application will. open now so now i have not clicked on the uh, shortcut key that is shift control alt so but when you start when you are searching and when you are typing when you at the time when you click on that adobe photoshop ps6 from that moment till you get this prompt which i showed you in the powerpoint presentation you have to keep it uh, keep it pressed and then once you click yes you can release the key so this is the photoshop application how it appears So let me show you how the shortcut key has to be used. Now this is the default setting. There is no changes which I have not done any changes. So when I, if when you want to remove, if by chance if I have removed done done some change, settings uh, changes in the settings, and I don't want that setting to be continued with the next project, so I can delete it. So let me show you how that is also done. We'll go to the desktop once again. Go to start, search, type photo. and before clicking this shift control and alt that should be the, that is the shortcut key which i am pressing right now and then i'm clicking on this so when it starts this is the first option which you get so uh, generally when we open an application windows will ask you for this message this is not the message which i was talking this is the, the see now as you can see adobe photoshop is extended delete adobe photoshop settings Right. So you click on yes, and then you release your mouse. Release your uh, key keys. The one, uh, the three keys which you were pressing. That is a shift control alt. So when you press that, all the settings which I have done previously, or which you ha you would have done in your system, that will get cleared out, and you will you will get the you will get the default settings. So I hope this starting of Photoshop is clear. Let's continue with our PPT. Next is creating a new file. So once you open your PowerPoint presentation, how to work? Where you're going to work with? So you need a place or a page where you're going to work with. So let's see. We'll go back to the PowerPoint uh, Photoshop software. So go to File, New. Now as you can see, 
this is a window which we get you can name your project uh, say if I'm preparing a banner uh, for a school so I'll just press say annual day banner annual day is a banner name which I'm giving already we have 15 or 11 height if you want to change it you can change it to inches as it is banner uh, we generally go for three six six cross three banner when it is a small one so this is okay I guess six cross if you don't like four you can give it a three so give it three and then color mode everything is by default the same thing background is white I'm not going to change this one if you want to change then you can change that so I'm just keeping it as white and then click OK so I've got the page where I'm going to work with so this is how we create a new document save document and its format uh, there are different formats in which we can uh, save the PDF uh, the uh, Photoshop uh, file so the by default the one which we use is PSD format or the PDG format so these are the two basic formats in which the Photoshop uh, file is saved and other than that you can change and save it to JPG format or GIF format or TIFF format or PCT format so these are the different formats in which you can uh, convert the Photoshop file into an image or a, a GIF file or a TFF file any format which these are different formats so we most commonly use JPG format uh, so when you say if you are creating a banner or something or if you are creating a small card or uh, if you are editing an image also you uh, after you edit it you can uh, save it as either as a Photoshop file itself or else you can save it as a JPG format which is most commonly used uh, by most of us so let's see how to save the file the steps to save is to you have to open your Photoshop file and then you uh, go to the file I'll just show you practically how we do it the Photoshop file is open so this is this was a, a format which we uh, the banner size which we already opened so I'll just insert an image into uh, insert any uh, shape into it say let us draw a rectangle or something so I'll just change the color now once this I've done it now I want to save this if I want to save this I have to go to file and click save if the actual the same file if you wanted to save to be PG or if you want a copy of it then you can go for go to save as I hope you all know the difference between save and save as uh, and uh, so I'm just clicking on save so as you can see the format which in which it is already uh, available is the format uh, in which the photo file is that is PSD and PDD format so if you want to change it say I'll just save it on the desktop I'll choose the format so as I told it TIFF format and your uh, PCX format your JPG format your uh, other formats are also uh, available in this uh, so whichever format you want you can choose that so by uh, mostly we use this format JPG so I'm just using that format and then I'm saving it on there desktop so it will ask you some basic things you just have to click on ok quality whichever size whichever quality you want by 8 is more than enough so once you do that we will just check it on the desktop whether the file is there or not so annual day is the file name so that it is already as you can see the type of the image is jpg so if you double click and open it you can see the jpg form so this is in the jpg format now so I hope this one is clear how to save a file now these are the different uh, um, tools which are available in Photoshop uh, when I showed you the um, Photoshop software you, as you can see these are the tools which are available here now each tool has a small right on the right side corner of a few tools you can see that there are a small arrow so you, when you right click on that you can see that these kind of sub tools will be available so I have taken an image in which you can see all the uh, uh, tools available in it so this is first one is your move tool other than that everything is connected so you have your rectangular marker so next one is the rectangular marker tool uh, concept so this is rectangular marker tool elliptical marker tool single row marker tool and uh, these are the sub tools so when you click on this uh, small arrow that is when you right click on this tool you can see the sub tools available within this so these are the different tools so we will be learning it slowly each tool how to use it the most commonly used tool will be explained by me so uh, we'll see the tools later so these are the tools which are this is a tool palette called as the tool palette of Photoshop
Let's move on with the next topic that is using layers. One of the most useful features of applications like Photoshop is the ability to work with layers. Layers allow you to have several pieces of images in the same file which can be arranged on top of each other to create a complete image. So when you're working with Photoshop, say if you want to create a, a new image with using 5 or 10 other images, so when you try to insert all the images into your Photoshop, each image will be put up as a different layer. So when you insert each image will be one above the other without this, each layer will be separate. It won't be interconnected unless and until you finish off working and you compress it and you make it as a new, you save it as a new image. So all the layers in Photoshop are separate from each other. If you want to delete any layer, you can delete it very easily. Once you say for example you have inserted 10 images and if you want to delete the 6th image which you don't feel like using, so you can delete the 6th layer easily without disturbing the remaining layers. So that is a very useful feature of uh, Photoshop uh, software. Now as you can see an image over here, this is the layer palette. This is how when you insert an image you can see as I showed you practically earlier also when you insert the first layer will be your background layer. Say for example this is an image which was directly inserted so that is the background by default. If in case you are not using an image and you are working on the canvas say the white uh, page which you have inserted you have mentioned the size and you have inserted and then if you are inserting the images on top of it then that those will be the different layers uh, coming which will be inserted on different layers above the background background layer will be always locked uh, you cannot disturb that if you want to move that then you have to remove the lock and then you can shift it now this is these are the different layers available now in your uh, uh, layers palette this this is the one which preserves the transparency this is something which prevents painting and drawing that is this is for painting concept and this is which prevents moving the things in your uh, um, layer palette and this is something which locks your layers and uh, this is uh, the tool which is used to create new layers into your layer pa uh, layers palette and this is used to delete the layer. Now when you are uh, um, trying to insert a new layer, one there are two different methods. One is the one which I have showed you here, the tool which is available over here and the other one is to create a new layer, you have another method that is go to layers menu and then go choose new and then choose layer. So automatically a new layer will be inserted rearranging of layers so the one this is say this is the background say you have inserted background then you have drawn two shapes in it now if you want to rearrange this then you just have to click drag and drop it here so when you're clicking and dragging the rectangle and then dropping it here in this position automatically the position will change flip will go up and the rectangle will come down or else if you want which both the ways if you want ellipse to come up you can just click and drag and drop it on top automatically rectangle will come come down so whichever way you feel like you can use that so you just have you can easily rearrange by clicking and dragging and dropping it down whichever position it is here I have only two layers so I just dragged and dropped that and showed you if you have 10 or 20 layers you can shift it accordingly the next concept is about applying uh, styles to the layers so once you have an image with more than one layer the layers can be blended together in a variety of ways so one way is to use most by default a layer will block out any sections of layer that it covers blending modes allow you to combine layers in a variety of ways so we have nearly 27 blending modes in uh, photoshop uh, the version which i'm using now is cs6 so we have 27 blending modes in this another way is to use layer transparency settings to simply make a layer partially transparent a layer mask can uh, mask concept can also be used to hide parts of a layer uh, a bit more uh, selectively so uh, we'll be learning about this masking concept only when we when I uh, when I explain you about the tools different tools so I'll show you practically with an example how the masking concepts and all are used in it so blending modes uh, are mainly used uh, to show, create a new effect with colors say it how the blending modes how it works is pixel by pixel uh, say if you're combining when you're blending two layers when the blending takes place, it's pixel by pixel, it tries to combine, mix off and then it creates a new uh, different color and it sees the effect, you can see the result at that time. So that's how the blending mode works and uh, transparency as I told you to make the object transparent, to make that layer transparent so that uh, uh, transparent as you all know how uh, you can see through that uh, particular uh, image or thing whatever it is. So uh, let me show you uh, practically how this thing works. 
Um, this is the uh, in, uh, uh, canvas where I have inserted three images, three shapes. So let's first use a blending mode on this rectangle concept. So as you can see, this is the uh, option where you will find all your um, uh, blending modes. So these are these are nearly 27 blending modes over here. So whichever you choose accordingly, the blending mode is applied on that particular layer. So for example, if I say I choose lighten, so the rectangle will get changed it to lighten color. So the uh, blending mode, uh, blend, lighten blending mode is applied on this rectangle layer. Uh, there is another option say this is uh, even in paint option also you will find the blending mode. So this is your brush tool. So when you click on this, you will find another tool. So all the blending modes which you were able to see there in the layers concept that is uh, available here also. So as we are now learning about the blending modes in layers, so that is why. Right. Uh, we are going to work with this now. So this is how you apply blending mode in your uh, rectangle and uh, the other one is your transparency settings. So transparency setting for example let's take up the round rectangle uh, to uh, layer and then as you can see your opacity uh, option here uh, it is already 100. When it is 100 percent it is completely opaque that is full color uh, fully hard opaque object. So if you want to uh, reduce once you reduce the numbers the transparency as you can see the image here in the left uh, the transparency is when you bring it down to zero the, it is completely transparent the object is completely transparent if you just make it as 25 31 percent it is partially transparent so that is how the transparency can, can be set for the layers so I hope you understood this one applying styles to the layers uh, concept let's move on to the PPT next is flattening and saving of file so once you have uh, worked with your image you have created uh, you have done all the changes you have done the blending modes or you have added new images or you have done all the editing everything is over then it then comes the time to flatten everything that is combine everything and save it save your file when you finish editing all the layers in your image you can merge or flatten layers to reduce the file size so flattening combines all the layers into a single background layer however you cannot edit layers once you have flattened them so before you save your file as a, as i told you the saving uh, um, options the different saving uh, extensions are your jpg format or your png or gif format whichever it is before you save it into that format you can do all the editing in photoshop but once you save it uh, that is you flatten that is what is called a saving your file flattening is nothing but combining everything it becomes a new one single image once you save it into jpg you cannot edit anything in it so however you cannot edit layers once you have flattened them so you shouldn't flatten an image until you are certain that you are you are, you are satisfied with all your design decisions so once you are satisfied with all your designs once you have done all the editing everything is over then only you should go for the saving option let us start learning about the different tools which are available in photoshop the tools in Photoshop can be categorized into few uh, sections like uh, selection tools, crop and slice tools, measuring tools, retesting tools and uh, painting tools etc. So let's start with the selection tools first. The tools uh, which comes in the selection tools are the tools which we are going to use for selecting uh, areas within your um, uh, image which you are going to edit in Photoshop. So the first uh, tool which comes under selection tool is marquee tool. So within marquee, the marquee tool we have uh, four uh, different tools that is rectangular marquee tool, elliptical marquee tool, single row marquee tool, single column marquee tool and the other tools are lasso tool, uh, polygonal uh, lasso tool, magnetic uh, lasso tool, quick selection toolbar and magic wand toolbar. So let's see practically how uh, these tools uh, work. I have inserted an image already. Um, so the first tool which is available in Photoshop is your move tool. As the name indicates move tool is used to, to move a particular image within your the Photoshop. So say, now currently we have only uh, one image which I have inserted here. Now as you can see a lock over here unless and until I remove the lock I cannot move my image here. So to, in order to remove this uh, in order to move this image uh, I need to remove the lock. You just have to click and drag and put it within this bin and then as you can see you can move the image as this is the only lay, only image available so when you move you will be able to see the uh, uh, the background of that so 
if in case you insert 5 or 10 layers 5 or 10 images into this and if you want to move the fifth layer image then you have to select the fifth layer and then you have to move using this move tool so move tool is literally used to move the image move anything within your photoshop so the next tool as i told you earlier is your rectangular marquee tool the marquee tool the four different types of marquee tools which we have is your rectangular marquee tool elliptical marquee tool single row marquee tool and your single column marquee tool so now let's start with the rectangular marquee tool first so these tools as i said earlier rectangular marquee tool, uh, are the selection tools which we are, which we are going to use to select now after doing the selection what is the purpose of this uh, tool is say within the selection area say if you want to do some editing work now i'll just select any brush and then i'll uh, go and choose any color which is say if i am choosing any red or anything and then I am trying to draw something. I, as you can see, the uh, the one the, when I'm drawing something, it is not moving outside the selected area. So if I want to edit something within the selected area, I can use this tool to select and then do whatever editing work I want to. So let's move with the second uh, second tool, the elliptical tool, elliptic, uh, elliptical marquee tool. So before we go there, let us go to the history and go back to the first image uh, the format in which it was so whenever you do some editing and you want to go back to the initial stage just go to the history and choose the initial one and then you can move on and do your next task elliptical marquee tool as i told you about the rectangular marquee tool elliptical marquee tool is also again used for uh, used for the selection purpose and if you want to edit something within this particular area you can use the uh, you can edit it within this particular area the selected area and uh, a, a few shortcuts which uh, uh, which we need to know about elliptical marquee tool is uh, when we are trying to select sorry when we are trying to we need to be very careful when we are selecting and uh, drawing or editing something within your photoshop because now i i chose the brush earlier and forgot to choose the elliptical tool again as I was explaining about elliptical marquee tool. So when you are selecting something with your uh, when you are selecting with your elliptical marquee tool as you can see when I start selecting something it starts it doesn't start like a proper circle it, it stretches out and it's like in a stretched format so if you want it to be in a proper circular format then use the shift the key and then you try to draw now you can see the circle is very perfect just like a complete circle now if you want to do some uh, uh, proper circle to selection then you have to better you better choose the use the shortcut key shift key. so now if now uh, the one which i have done the selection is without the shift key as you can see it is appearing like a stretched one and if you want a proper circle then click press the shift key and then you start selecting so now the circle is a proper circle the another shortcut key is like when you try when you want uh, the selection to start from uh, the center say when you're starting your selection now now you can see the difference of the selection which we usually do now with the center the point from where I'm clicking that is the center sometimes when you're trying to select now if I when I'm trying to select the Mickey Mouse from here I'm not able to select it properly or some area maybe if I go down and I'm not able to select completely the ears that cut or something like that so in that case you can use the alt key so when I start here so the circle can be stretched out like this and the center as it started from the center point so you can select the complete thing properly so shortcut key is to form a complete circle proper circle one you will need to use the short shift key and if an, and if you want a circle to be formed from the point from where you are clicking that is that should be the point of center center point of your circle then you better use the alt key so these are the two shortcut keys which we have uh, now let's move on with the next tool that is your lasso tool now lasso tool is just like you draw with your pen on a paper so it's a, it is also again a selection tool but it's just like a free form pen so i've just drawn it without any proper shape you just roughly you can draw and you can select so lasso tool is a free form tool again the purpose as i told you earlier you can edit everything within this area so next is your polygonal lasso tool now polygonal lasso tool is not like a freeform lasso tool now here this is like you have straight lines uh, you just have to click at one point now see as you can see I am drawing straight lines here 
you just have to join it here so this is a polygonal as a tool you with using straight lines you just have to select the area it could go on with any di dimension uh, the, the the shape could be like any as you can see i have drawn it without any proper uh, 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 shapes zigzag shapes the next one is your magnetic lasso tool now magnetic lasso tool uh, the purpose of this is see when you click on particular say we'll, let us take this area so i am just clicking on this particular color and uh, I can draw a straight line just I just have to move the mouse I, according to that border and according to the color the points get selected automatically I am not clicking anything I'm just moving the mouse around the line which is of the same color so it this tool is very useful when it comes when you're trying to select something of uh, same color and you need to draw the proper line uh, so a properly selected uh, line and then you can select it so now as you can see I just moved my mouse I just started with the first point moved my mouse and then the selection was done the straight lines lines where you when you are working with colors and you want the, the borders to be selected properly you can use the magnetic lasso tool the next tool is your quick selection toolbar now quick selection toolbar is again something which you want to select say uh, a color which you which is spreaded out and you want to select it quickly or anything which uh, 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 let us see how it works uh, now when I'm trying to move my mouse as you can see it is trying to take up the borders of now for example if I need uh, this Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse to be selected so I'm just moving the mouse and you can see that the it is adjusting automatically I'm trying to select the background actually not uh, uh, other than the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse I'm trying to select the background so when I'm moving the mouse as you can see the border is getting adjusted according to the nearest whichever the area where I'm trying to move my mouse as you can see it is getting selected like this so once the selection is done and if in case if I have now I have missed out the hand uh, part of it and if you feel that that has to be uh, that is cut out and you want to bring it back so I'll just choose the minus symbol and then I'll remove the uh, hand part now the hand part is not there in that background selection so other things are all there so if you want to go back again start with plus see to that you select the plus symbol and the minus symbol properly and then you work with it so now all the backgrounds has been selected Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse except the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse the backgrounds has been selected now Mickey Mouse Minnie Mouse hand has been cut and the shoes are also cut so as I told you earlier you can just you click on the minus symbol here and then you can deselect it now as you can see that is done properly again uh, when you're doing the selection I just see to that I do it perfectly little bit so as you can see the background has been selected there is one more uh, shortcut key say if I am selecting this and uh, instead of the background I want the Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse to be selected we have a shortcut key called uh, control shift I which is inverse selection control shift and I if I just press it as you can see the background selection is gone and the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse has been selected. Now something which we missed out is this area was also not selected so we will deselect this area again. We don't need this. We just need the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. So the shortcut key to inverse the selection. Previously we selected uh, the complete background. We didn't select the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. But now I feel uh, instead of uh, background if I want to select the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse then I can choose the uh, short, uh, we, uh, we can use the shortcut key called inverse that is control shift I so the complete selection got inverse and the other that the selected part is left out and the deselected part is now selected that is the inverse selection so this is how you use quick selection toolbar and next is your magic wand toolbar magic wand toolbar is again very interesting toolbar the tool is say wherever you click the pixel on which you are clicking that color so if now I've clicked uh, clicked over here. So when I'm clicking the pixel which was selected, that pixel, wherever it is spread, the same color wherever it is spreaded out. So the so those colors are all selected now. Now as you can see, I clicked over here. The pixel that color, the green dark green color, was spreaded out over here. So that color, hello, that has been selected. Now this uh, 
can be increased or decreased now as you can see a tolerance over here is 32 given if I put it as 1 what will happen when I click on one pixel there is no other pixel when the tolerance is less when I am clicking on one particular pixel there is no other pixel which is exactly matching the pixel which I have selected so if you want to one only when you increase the tolerance now say if you are choosing 100 and I'm clicking on something so when I'm clicking on it so it the, the choosing part that is the selection part has been increased so now it is taking up some light green colors also the tolerance is increased now if in, so the tolerance initially which was given was 32 we will proceed with that so wherever I'm clicking it will choose according to the, now which if I'm choosing just the brown the dark brown color it is choosing accordingly so I hope you understood this one crop slice tool and slide select tool so crop tool you would have used this tool in many of the applications uh, whenever you want to cut a particular image and you just you want to focus on only a, a particular section of an image then you can use this crop tool now if I want to focus only on uh, uh, the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and if I want to crop out all the unnecessary sections then I can use the crop tool and then once you are done the settings then you have to click on this tick symbol or else you can directly hit enter button that is also all right so I've done the cropping part so all the unnecessary things I have to move only the I focused mainly on Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and uh, next tool is your slice tool slice tool is used to slice out your image into two or three parts or how many other parts you want or if, if you want to select a particular part of an image you can do that also using your slice tool and then save it as a separate export it into a web format or any image format and then you can save it so if I am trying to here I am trying to slice out the Mickey Mouse separately and any uh, Minnie Mouse separately so I have done the slicing and two slices are available here so see you as you can see 0 1 and 0 2 two slices are available now the difference between the slice tool and slice select is when you slice slice tool is to just to slice out the image that is to cut out the image and a slice select is if in case say when you have cut out uh, uh, say your first part is not uh, properly selected now if I want this ear uh, the band part of this Mickey Mouse Minnie Mouse also to be uh, selected and if I just if I want to do some adjustment I can do it using this slice select by selecting the first part when it is only slice you won't be able to shift you won't be able to select it as you can see when you're selecting uh, the border is with a brown colored uh, dark light brown or dark brown colored uh, line so you can do that now I've sliced it out now I guess it is all right so first part is this second part is this as you can see when I am selecting the selection line is a light brown colored line so that is the difference between slice and slice select so the next set of tools uh, which we are going to learn is about the measuring tool so the first tool which comes under the measuring tool is your eyedropper tool uh, then comes your color sampler ruler tool note tool and count tool so these are the tools which you are going to see now so the eyedropper tool are the tool which is used to select a particular color so for example say if I have if I want to choose this color I just have to click on it using this as soon as I click on it you can see the color the foreground color has been selected as this one and there is a background color as well if you want to change you can go and change it to any color whichever you like you choose it and then you click OK so when if you want to choose uh, either you can click over here or else you can use the alt key and then you can choose the color so as soon as I clicked over here you can see the background color got changed so uh, the main co idea behind this uh, eyedropper tool is just to select any color whichever you like so you just have to click on it and why do we select uh, say you want to uh, use a brush and paint uh, the color somewhere in your uh, image say the same color has been chosen with the, the color which I uh, selected using the eyedropper tool the same color I'm using here to paint or you if you want some text to be uh, typed within your document say if you want to type something then the same color uh, as you can see the same color is being used for typing text as well so eyedropper, to uh, eyedropper tool is mainly used to just to select a color and you can use it for typing text or painting or which were the same color it's the idea behind is just to choose the color and use it somewhere in your document itself in your uh, image itself 
and the second tool uh, is the color sampler tool let's go back to the initial uh, stage of your image and now the next one as i said is your color sampler now color sampler tool is also just to measure the colors now it color sampler tool allows you to measure four different colors so for example say if i click on here as you can see here the color which i chose it has been the rgb combination of that color is over here now if i say if i'm clicking over here the next set of color details I say rgb combination of that color the point where i'm clicking uh, that color details you will get it so likewise you can choose for four points say now if i'm clicking over here then you got the four third one again and say if i'm clicking over here uh, i got the fourth one and the fifth one actually uh, it doesn't come it doesn't get saved but if you once you move your mouse as you can see over here in this uh, place rgb combination say if i'm taking my mouse over here you can see the rgb combination over there the color combinations are to be combination you can it's visible over there also but actually the color sampler tool is just to measure the color for the colors four different colors and then so the detail you get the detail once you get the details you can use this for uh, um, later on uh, uh, use these color details to uh, color somewhere in your image later on so the next tool is ruler tool so let's go back to the initial stage first when you want to go back to your initial stage just go to the history point and then click on the uh, initial thing so you will get you will come to that particular point so once the ruler tool is again used to measure or to we can say uh, you it's like inserting a margin in your uh, uh, document you just want to separate your if you want to separate your sections you can use this uh, ruler tool just to measure something or you can uh, use glides to divide your page now let's uh, open a new page first uh, it's by default some uh, measurement is already there so the you have got the page so when you're working with a ruler you have to go to view and then you have a ruler option over here click on that once you click you, as you can see you get the rulers in your uh, page now if you want to insert a margin so you just have to click your mouse and click use your mouse and click there and bring in the glide this is called as a glide again this is horizontal glide and this is the vertical glide so it's like a margin now now say uh, there are uh, times or uh, 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 when you want to work only on one particular section of your document and using the measurement you can there are two ways in which you can insert a glide either by clicking and dragging like this or else you can go here and you can choose new glide and you can specify the distance position of your glide say if i'm giving it as 10 centimeter or i'll say 8 centimeter I'm giving it as vertical and then clicking OK. So as you can see, 8 centimeter from the from this initial ma uh, point, 8 centimeter, you've got this. Now, if you want to move this glide, you can use your move tool. Now, you won't be able to move. just click and then move. So when you want to move your uh, um, glide, you just use your move tool and then click on the move tool and then bring it over here. So now it's like I said, I've divided the page into some three sections if you want i can bring another glide just to divide it like that if i there are times when you want to work second, uh, there are times when you want to work uh, at the center of your page so you know the measurements left to uh, from left you want this much margin and the from right it has to be of this much margin and from the top it has to be of like top and bottom it has to be of this margin and only at this part if you want to work in that case you have to insert all these glides and then you can uh, paint or draw or insert any shape or anything whichever you like you can just insert it and then work so for example say if i'm inserting a rectangle over here it's like at the center of the part when i want to work i can do uh, create rulers and then insert lights and then work on it if you want to lock this guide you don't want it to be moved then you can lock it once you lock it then you can uh, you won't be able to move your glide when you're bringing your uh, cursor mouse to this particular place as you can see it is not changing into that double headed arrow once you remove that uh, lock glide again when you bring your mouse you can see the double headed arrow coming over here so now you can move it if you don't want to if you don't want it to be moved you just have to lock the glide once your work is done you can just directly clear the glide and all the glides are gone and if you don't want the rulers again click on the rulers again and the rulers is gone so i hope this one is clear the next one is your node tool let's go back to the mickey mouse and Minnie mouse uh, image 
The next one is your note tool. The note tool is mainly used when you are working in teams or say you have given your image uh, for editing uh, to somebody and they have edited it and they have given some effect into your image and then they have sent back the image to you and you are checking it out and you feel some other changes has to be done in some part of the image. Say for example now Mickey Mouse this color, uh, Minnie Mouse this uh, her dress color you want it to be little more dull or little brighter then you can click here and type the note to uh, change color into bright red. So you can add a note like this and then you can send it to your team. Now say again you want some other something this brown this you want this tree trunk to be of little light brown color then change color to light brown so you can add the notes like this and then you can send the file to your uh, person and this is mainly used when uh, uh, they are working on some big project or you have a, a team where one team is checking what and all the changes have been done according to the requirement of the customer and everything is being done and if it is not done they can add these notes and they will be sending this to the team. So this is how note uh, tool is being used, this is where note, note tool is being used. So the next one is your count tool. Now count tool as the name indicates is just to count your, uh, count the uh, particular uh, anything let that be say for example if we take up there are trees in this image uh, so if you want to count the number of trees say for example I put one here then click this is two as you can see it is adding numbers three four five six seven it's just to count uh, say if there are uh, uh, images or items in your image which you want to keep a note of how many numbers are there so this is account group one if you want to rename it you can rename it say I'll rename it as trees and then click OK. Now these are trees. Uh, say if I want another group to be created, say uh, if in case your image is having uh, more number of people and you want to count the people in that image, then you can do that also. Now I'll name it as here. Uh, we don't have much. Uh, let us count the number of benches here. So I'll name it as bench and then click OK. So I'll just second group so when I click it again it is starting from 1 1 2 so there are 2 benches so I am just having count 2 for that so you have count 2 here right uh, I hope you understood this control uh, count uh, count tool also the next set of tools which we are going to learn are our retouching tool the first uh, tool within that is our spot healing brush as the name indicates spot healing is to heal a particular spot uh, in that image now this is uh, how when you uh, go to photo studio uh, and you take up your passport size photograph and actually you might be having some marks on your face but when, the, when you get the printout copy you, uh, you your photo is actually very bright and there won't be any spots on your face so this is how they uh, remove those spots from your faces uh, so click on the spot healing brush and then before you uh, start using it uh, let me tell you a few options a few things which you need to know uh, these are the options which you have that is proximity match create texture content aware by default content aware is there and the proximity match, proxi uh, proximity match and the content aware are more or less the same um, what it does is when you click on particular spot uh, it says to that the proximity that is the surrounding pixels which are there uh, when you click uh, uh, on a particular spot the surrounding pixels are uh, noted and it decides what pixel has to be put in inside this particular area where you are actually clicking so now if I will just increase the uh, size of that particular uh, the spot healing and then I will just make a click so uh, when I click as you can see that it checks the surrounding and accordingly it just changes so wherever you have spot you just have to click on it and then you can remove it now just to show you I'm just I've removed a few spots which are there on her face now this is how spot healing works and the next tool is your healing brush now rather than your uh, spot healing which works only on particular spot healing brush what you have to do is you have to click on the uh, area which you want to choose as your 
scaling part so say if you click here it takes these pixels and wherever you're clicking after that it applies the same pixel to those areas now let's go back to the initial stage first now then when you click on your healing brush and now say I want I'm choosing this particular pixel so now when you start clicking on your spotted areas now as you can see that these pixels are getting applied over here so now if I don't want these pores of the face to be visible I can use it and I can heal it so this is how healing brush works spot healing is too specifically only on one particular spot you have to click and then it takes up the surrounding pixel uh, colors and then it applies within that particular area and healing brush is you choose the pixel before itself and the same uh, uh, pixels are applied throughout your image wherever you click so I hope this one is clear the next uh, tool is your patch tool now let us just go back to the um, initial stage of your image now patch tool is again uh, say you want to remove the spot you just have to select that particular area and then click and drag it to the area which you want it to be replaced with so now when I brought it here this particular pixel got replaced over here it's like patching work uh, uh, small patching works can be done using this patch tool so for healing spot heal uh, for removing these spots from the face you can use uh, spot healing or healing brush and uh, for just for just patch work for uh, any other image you can use this one so I hope this patch tool is clear the next is your uh, content aware and your red, red eye tool let me tell you the red eye tool first uh, we'll go choose an image uh, uh, which shows you the yeah we have an image here now the generally red eye tool uh, where we use this you would have noticed that when you take image in dark uh, room using your mobile or your digital camera you would have noticed that there, uh, there is a red eye uh, the, the, a red uh, thing which comes on your on in the on the eye of that particular image so if you want to remove that particular red eye so we use this red eye tool so you just have to choose your red eye tool and then click on that particular red eye of that particular image so now as you can see I have removed the red eye of that particular now this image now the baby's eye is looking very good so this is how we use red eye tool so red eye tool is generally used to only to remove the red eye uh, problem when you take a, an image let's go back to uh, the other image now this is uh, uh, the other uh, tool which we have is your content aware uh, move tool now content aware move tool um, uh, the main purpose of using this is to just to move when you want an image to be moved around in your uh, page just to make some space and you want to type out some text say for example uh, let us move these three balloons and make some space to type some text so I'll just choose a content aware and I'll draw and select this balloon and I'll just move this to this particular area now what happens is automatically the space is covered with the nearby, with the nearby pixel as I told you earlier with your uh, uh, um, spot healing and healing brush we had there also content aware uh, tool content aware option so what it does is just to it, it just fills in the area with the nearest uh, pixel surrounded by that but wherever you select I selected this balloon from here so whatever was uh, surrounding that uh, selected area it just fills that here now let me move this uh, balloon to this particular location so that we have some more space to I'll just click and move it over here so it has been shifted so we have some space over here now if you want to type some text you can type it yeah so let us type something so fly I don't have the text color chosen so let me choose the text color as white and then click OK. I'll type it as Pi and Hi. So this is how you add. You can add in text if you want to move it to here. You can move it. So this is how 
I have made space here. So where, where any any uh, image which you want it to be moved, so you have it uh, you know, too much congested, or you want something to be moved from one place to another, and you feel that it, the surrounding pixels can be uh, can cover up that particular area. In that case, you can use this content aware tool. So I have this set. These set of tools are clear. The next one is your uh, magic eraser tool. A magic eraser tool is mainly used where uh, say you have a common color uh, uh, which wherever say now if I click using the magic eraser here the blue color the pixels connected to the all the blue all the pixels wherever I clicked the pixel whichever was there at uh, the color which was there in that pixel the whole thing gets erased using the magic eraser so magic eraser is very useful when you want to erase a set of uh, you know, a group of uh, a whole bunch of place where the same color is being used you can use that magic eraser and it removes the complete color from uh, that particular uh, page or image let's go back to the initial stage the next uh, tool is your blur tool now blur tool as the name indicates uh, if you want to blur out some particular uh, uh, particular part of an image so, you know, here we have this particular balloon uh, let us let us try to blur out this one now as you can see the slightly getting blurred out now if you want to know the difference uh, how it was before and now so let us go back to the initial stage when I'm clicking here you can see that very clearly and now you can see that I have blurred it out a little bit. So blur tool is just to use blur, blurring uh, a particular part of an image when you want to focus on a particular thing. It, it's, uh, I've just used this image to show you how to blur it. You can mainly use it where uh, you have somebody's image and you want the background to be a little blurred. You can use the blur tool there. The next tool is your uh, sharpen tool. Let us take another image to explain you this sharpen image or uh, sharpen tool. Uh, sharpen tool just like a blur tool a blur tool is used to blur out something and sharpen image a sharpen tool is to sharpen an image so you if you have a image which is little blurred and you want it to be uh, sharpened and uh, look little uh, better from the blurry image if you, you if you have taken an image you want it to be and you don't have any other uh, option of uh, taking another snap of that particular image and you have taken it and you want it to be a little sharpened so then you can use a uh, blurry image uh, it should be too very uh, blurry uh, to some extent blurry uh, image can be sharpened using this tool so uh, let us take this example say the sofa of this particular area is not that uh, focused if you want it to be a little more focused you can use this uh, sharpen tool to uh, now as you can see it was not this much sharpened before now it is looking a little clear now let us see the initial image this is for this was the initial image now when you when I have sharpened it you can see it's a little more focused now the sofa is a little more focused and you can uh, see it is uh, it is appearing better than before so sharpen tool is just to sharpen your image now next is your uh, smudge tool smudge tool is just to uh, smudge out as you can see the here when you want to uh, smudge a particular image you can use this you would have seen this somewhere uh, images uh, appearing like this so smudge tool is just to smudge out uh, say you want one particular section of your uh, image to be you know, smudged out then you can use the smudge tool the next set of tools are your let us go back to the initial stage first and the next set of tool is your dodge tool um, now dodge tool is like uh, if you have any part of your uh, image which is dull and you want it uh, you want to put some bright uh, light in that particular area now say let us take up this plant uh, it is little shady over here so I'll just use the dodge tool to make it look little bright as you can see it is little bright now uh, it was shady at this particular side and now it is looking better now let us see the difference between the first initial sec initial image was like this and now the after using the dodge tool it is a little more bright as you can see this uh, light uh, the uh, bright light is uh, getting uh, display I mean it is focused on this uh, leaf this, this side of the plant also very well the dodge tool is used to just brighten up uh, one particular area the next tool is your burn tool now dodge tool is to brighten a particular thing and just uh, burn tool the other on the other hand is to uh, make it look little 
burn out that particular you know as you can see i'm making the whole plant look little dull and shady now using the burn tool now as you can see initially it was not like this half of the image was little bright half of the plant section was bright and now the whole plant is little burned out now this is how uh, the burn tool this is where the burn tool is used next is your uh, sponge tool now sponge tool is used to remove a particular color from uh, you could call it as removing a color from that particular image now say for example when i'm clicking over here you can see that uh, the image color is getting removed and it is becoming like uh, dull and you can call it as a black and white color i've removed the color from the whole uh, image now now the whole image looks like uh, a black and white image now you can see the difference initially it was like this and now after using the sponge tool it has become something like this so this is how we use the sponge tool and now with this our reach re retouching tools are over so let's move on to the last set of tools which we are going to learn in this chapter that is our painting tool so first is our brush tool uh, painting tools uh, as the name indicates this is all about painting in your uh, for photoshop um, software so let's open a um, new document new canvas that we can work with so brush tool as you all know this i have already shown you if you want to increase the brush size or you want to change the brush type which you're using you can change it i can you can choose the color whichever you want and then you can just brush it so this is a different style of brush which i've used uh, so you can change the type of brush as well and then um, you can use it so whichever you like you can use that brush uh, so brush tool is that and then pencil tool uh, just like your paint you can use it to draw something just like you use your pencil to draw something and write out something the next tool is uh, color replacement tool uh, for this let me take another image uh, the same balloon image so if I want to change this color uh, that is the uh, blue color to be changed to something else then you have to go to image adjustment and then go to that replace color option here and then with this that is just like your eyedrop symbol you just have to choose the color which you want to get replaced and this option is to multiple uh, multiple you use for multiple selection that is adding a sample to it so you have different corners of that uh, you know, image uh, different corners might be having different shaded colors so you can choose it give a multiple selection and then you have to come here and set the hue to uh, a little less or whichever way you want you can increase it or you can decrease it uh, it decrease it and then choose the color which way you want to replace it with say if I want this to be replaced with some red color uh, then I can choose any color with red or green or anything and you just have to choose it and then click OK and then say click OK. So now the background color got changed to a green color. So initially it was like this, and now after replacing color, it is like this. So this is how we uh, use the color replacement tool. The next tool is your uh, mixer brush tool. Uh, so for that, again, let us come back to the um, canvas. And now this is uh, uh, just like uh, you mix your colors in your. Uh, uh, watercolors in your paint when you paint something uh, it's more or less like that so uh, let me show you a few uh, steps how we how we can uh, mix up the uh, colors in it you can increase the size of it or you can uh, change the um, uh, type of uh, brush which you are uh, going to use you can let us take wet media brush so it doesn't replace your brush which you already have set if you want to change or save the previous brush you can save it or else you can leave it uh, these are different uh, modes uh, like different preset uh, uh, brushing uh, methods like dry wet etc and this is uh, where your brush wet met wet mode is now 80 percent so now it is the color is green now when i'm trying to mix up as you can see this like transparent color is getting mixed with the background color uh, just like painting um, with your brush on your white canvas white paper sheet when you're painting just like that and uh, if you want to change it say you want dry 
wet won't be there and you just have to draw it uh, let us choose some different brush let it be wet media itself and the cup brush let us pick up something else anything so we like just need uh, so as it is dry so it, the painting will be dry the the colors will be thick and uh, you can see the bright colors over here uh, when it is wet the uh, coloring will be again little dull so wet is not zero percent when it is dry your wet percentage is zero and uh, and the load is uh, something which tells you the amount of color which you're loading on the brush so if we go with the wet uh, it is wet is 50 percent so as you can see the stroke uh, is like this and if you load very less uh, amount of color only for one stroke uh, when it is dry you will be able to see it a little clear if you load a very less amount of color let's say zero you will get again very less amount of color uh, in your brush As we're changing it to the uh, trying to change the color, the mode is getting the uh, preset settings is getting changed as it is custom. When you click on dry, it has some certain preset values you cannot edit. If you edit it, it comes back to the custom option. So, as you can see, when it is wet, the colors can be easily mixed, but uh, when it is dry, the color won't get mixed. Uh, let us change the color and see. We'll just choose some red color and we'll see. As you can see, it is dry, so it is not getting mixed. If it is wet, then the same color you can see that it's just like you mix with water, the wet color can be mixed. So, this is how a uh, mixing brush works when you want to paint something in your canvas. On the canvas, then you, uh, you can use different types of brushes and all. And the next um, brush is your history brush tool so for us let us go to this uh, balloon image a history uh, brush tool is used when you want to uh, get back to the previous state with which you were like for example let us uh, use the brush tool and uh, draw something here as you can see I have shaded something over here and I have I've, I've changed it now if you so use it by mistake if you have done something wrong and you want to come back to the previous state then you can use your history brush tool and then erase the part which you want to replace so now it has come back to the old state itself so as you can see so history brush is mainly used to come back to the previous state which are, say when you're coloring or when you're shading or something on uh, you have done something wrong uh, say you're working on another image and you've done something wrong and you come you want to come back to the previous stage and you can use the history brush tool the other brush is art history brush tool say now you have different patterns over here tight short tight long uh, now let uh, let me show you the uh, tight long as you can see something this is uh, going on let's say loose curl this is something which is there now when you are doing some changes with this uh, I have done a lot of changes over here and if I want to come this looks like a pattern which you uh, can put it as a background and you can show your art using your art history brush you can bring back the image and then you can show like this is like some pattern which is there at the background and you can actually show the actual image this you can work when you are working with some uh, image of uh, say a person and you blur it out with using your art history brush and then you can bring back that person's image at the center it looks uh, that will be a different pattern so you can use these things for that so I hope you understood the art history brush as well now let us move on to the gradient tool Now gradient tool, uh, to show you this also let me take the blank page. Gradient tool is like uh, giving a shading color. Now I have chosen a gradient tool and I have, uh, this is the latest one which you choose, this shows the latest one which you choose in and uh, this shows a frequently used one. So we have list of uh, gradient uh, patterns or you can say this, these are the different 
uh, predefined uh, preset ones if you want to use it it's like from red to some other color it goes off you so just have to stretch out line and you can see that red and that shading comes out you can draw it in this way also the coloring effect changes the angle changes of all the shading so creating tool you can use it to color out that particular uh, page with this background and then you can use your text document uh, text tool to type out something and then you can insert an image and you can create a new pattern so gradient tool is just for shading uh, showing some uh, inserting some shaded uh, colors into your uh, page and paint bucket as you know um, just like your paint tool uh, just like your paint which you have uh, gen which uh, which we generally uh, which just generally comes along with your windows uh, software uh, paint bucket is just to fill the colors okay if i click using this color the so paint bucket by default this was the color so the whole page wherever it was there it just got filled with this so i hope you understood uh, all the tools under the painting tools so, so with this our chapter gets over i hope you all understood all the topics uh, covered under this chapter if you have any kind of doubts uh, post your comments um, below and um, I'll get back to you soon. If you want to get more information about this chapter or the PowerPoint presentation of this, you can go and visit my blog. The link has been mentioned in the description box. Thank you.